you witnessed the infamous uh, TNA fight between Ted Hart and CM Punk, and I was just wondering... It wasn't much... It was like a really bad UFC fight in that we walked out... I forget who I was walking with, but it could have been any... uh, Because I usually ate with the same... I usually ate with Rudy the Ref or Posey or... um, Golly, who else? They had a group that used to eat. um, Rick Santel, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we all ate down at the White Trash Cafe, where where only the greasiest uh, fatty foods were fed were fed <laughs> to wrestlers. And when we're done, I'm walking up, and all of a sudden, to the left, there's a fight that is literally just started. And all, all, from the very beginning, it was take down by Teddy, punk down, and Teddy's just destroying him. And I think Sabu was walking up with this. But regardless, Sabu ran in and did the, and, and Teddy, when Sabu was there and got, you know, Teddy to focus on him, he broke for Sabu. So Sabu did the save for Punk on that particular one. But the whole thing, I, if it lasted 20 seconds, I'd be surprised. It was, you know, it was short. Punk had no offense and was just covering up. Fortunately, and he also wasn't badly scarred out of it either because, you know, Teddy was pulled off pretty quickly. It wasn't like it lasted a long time. But there was no chance, at least from what we were seeing, that Punk was going to get much of a comeback out of it. Do you think uh, UFC is going to give Punk the second match on his contract? Because it's been about a year and a half now or more since... uh... They can. He'll probably lose it. But, you know, that was one of the strangest things is Punk going into MMA. I could see see, uh, a healthy Daniel Bryan, you know, Bryan Danielson going into MMA. Right. Um, That would make sense to me. But Punk was never really that guy, um, at least not in my impression. He's always been difficult. Phil's always been his own unique guy. but um, And polarizing. Either you loved him or you hated him, which is part of his appeal. He, he came across as a rebel and played it well because it sort of is him. And, you know, he is very egocentric in what he does. You know, if he breaks up with a girl... He still doesn't want her dating other people, for example. <laughs> okay. You know, that kind of guy. And there's recently been speculation that uh, CM Punk might be on this uh, September event that I guess Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks are putting together. They want to attempt to well, sell That's it. under the assumption that, that that's going to be more than what it actually is. Got to remember, <clears throat> Cody and the Young Bucks are under contract to Ring of Honor. And that involves a certain amount of exclusivity in the United States and and you know and in various places abroad, part of Canada. Um, so anything that's going to be going on on that particular thing would have to be logically based on all of the key players would have to have Ring of Honor involved and would have to have a payoff beyond just being you know these guys going out and do it. Remember the Bullet Club. And what they're doing is a truly diversified brand now that's being utilized effectively by multiple businesses. And one of the businesses is the brand itself, the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club was created and is technically owned by New Japan. But it's being utilized by their business partner, Ring of Honor. Then there's the being the elite thing where they have more control over it, and those appear to be done autonomously, you know, that they're doing these things on their own. They're just wild and crazy guys. Yeah. But those are, in, those are actually very specifically tied to the booking now. Okay. So this is all a package. So whatever happens up there, it's going to be a great show, and it will have people that are normally not involved. So who knows? Punk could be one of those guys. It would certainly be easy for him to do. It's right down the road. 